we said we're going to be sponsoring one million copies of Rhapsody of Realities. Pastor Chris had said, how many group pastors were willing to do a million copies? I turned back and I saw Pastor stand up and then I looked at the screen, I saw him on the screen. I'm like, okay, so we're doing a million copies. The group pastors who, who have decided that, not, I didn't say every group pastor stand up. I mean the group pastors that are taking the daring step of doing one million copies at the least before the year runs out, one million copies. And immediately I started speaking in tongues because I knew that this was not going to be by might, it was not going to be by power, but it had to be by the Spirit of God. So when we came back a few days later and Pastor had called for a meeting on Sunday, I mean, I already knew he, were, he wanted to share the vision of the one million copies and everything, but I don't think he even intended the meeting to go the way he ended up going. And that was how I really knew that God was with us in this journey. <laughs> I can call a feeling of excitement. Glory! But I was like, yeah, not really for me. I mean, if we're that rich and connected, I'm, I'm gonna well, you know, get some of that money. It wasn't math in my head. I'd actually got, gotten up during the meeting and drove to the nearest store to get a big bowl of ice cream. It was my earnest desire to do something big for the Lord, something of magnitude to be relevant in the project and just to make the Lord Jesus happy and please him. I laid everything on that seed. I was thinking about all the things I wanted to do for the Lord, all you know, the visions and thoughts that he shared with me and I anchored it all on that Isaac and so this Rhapsody project was really a channel to express that deep desire to do something for the Lord. I didn't think I was going to be a part of it. I honestly didn't think we were going to be able to do it. Not that my faith, not that I didn't have faith in it, but I just, I just felt it was just too far reached. There was one time that Pastor Deji, one of our meetings, our leaders meeting, he was talking about there are people out there that would rather give, you know, to people directly to like, you know, the poor as opposed to give to the church. I was like, oh damn, well, shots fired. That was literally talking to me indirectly. I would say my first act of faith was sowing my widow's mites. I'd had this money in my account that I wanted to use to pay off my credit card. And while I was praying, while, you know, during our prayer time, you know, the Holy Spirit had ministered to me to sow in that money into our Rhapsody project. And I was like, Holy Spirit, are you sure? Because you know that these people, if I don't pay this credit card, you know, this is what's going to happen. But the leading was so strong. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I went ahead and I sent the money in and I waited. First day, I, I didn't get any notification of, you know, sending the money back to the credit card. I waited the second day, I, I kept waiting. I was like, didn't these people realize that I didn't send this money to them? But they never really took the money. And when that happened, it was a testimony for me because that was my first time of actually sewing my, my widow's might and it felt so good. And you know, from there I was inspired to do more. In that prayer, and in that time of fellowship, the Spirit of God opened my eyes to see my car, which was a Honda Civic 2010 as a seed. And when he showed it to me as a seed, I just, I just kept quiet. I was like, Lord, he was like, give it, give it to me. I remember hearing this so clearly in my spirit. And I was like, I, I want to give it to you, but you know what this car means to me. It was my first car and cost me around 7000 and that was just to get the car, not to talk about, oh, you have to change tires, change brake, and everything. So I, I, I was like, Lord, this car means so much to me. But if this is what you're asking me to do, to be able to meet the target that I have, we'll do it. But one of the things I told God, I was like, Lord, I don't have any kind of expectation that, to this. What I, after he was able to explain and show me a vision of this is what I want you to do and I, I understood the assignment. I said, Lord, I want to do this because I love you. Not because I have any expectation towards if you would give it back, but I just wanted to prove to you that I'm in, I'm in this and I love you. When I had listed it on Facebook Marketplace and I started getting you know people texting me and the price of what they were saying, I was like, mm, it doesn't look like it's going to be able to hit the amount. But I was like, so I called, you know, one of the sisters and I said, hey, this is what I want to do. But the amount I'm getting doesn't look like it's going to be possible. She's like, just, just go ahead. If the Lord has asked you to give it and you've listed it on, on this platform, it would, it will sauce, it will go through. I said, okay. 
So I listed it and I began to pray. I said, Father, thank you because yes, I receive this money and give it towards Rhapsody of Realities before the end of this ministry year. Fast forward, I was able to sell the car. I was able to send the money in for the, and how, oh, how excited I was. Each network had targets. So we weren't like, so I'm in Baltimore. So Baltimore's weeks were, you know, on Wednesdays. So every Wednesday of each week in the month, we were given, starting from the month of June. And the first week, to the glory of God, right? As a manager who has known for the past two years that we were supposed to, or Pastor had a desire for us to do one million copies of the Rhapsody of Realities in the month of June, the first week of 2023, we actually outgave everything in one week that we had done since November of 2022 to May of 2023. In one week, Brethren sponsored 70,000 copies of the Rhapsodies of Realities. You know, if that did not move me as a manager to pray more, to even inspired me to give, I don't know what would have. It's so crazy when I think about how I met Jade, because to be honest, and, and this was something I worked on in my own faith earlier in the year, and when I first met her, like we, we met talking about God and sharing faith. But then, you know, <laughs> like lo like when you're raised in a, in a ministry like Love World, it's like faith sometimes can be, like I almost feel like the faith that I'm surrounded by and my own faith can sometimes be intimidating to other people. So I'm always like cautious sometimes to like only share certain bits of my faith or certain parts of my walk, you know, and certain things I try to avoid talking about. And so in the last couple months leading up to the, you know, the, the closing portion or, or the closing run, if you would, of our Rhapsody um, completion, I started, you know, sharing more about um, what I was learning in depth, you know, having Bible study. Sometimes we're having like three, four hour long phone calls. And so I was getting like really confident, like, you know what, I, I can unapologetically share exactly my walk, you know, everything about my ministry. Like, I want her to know that too. She's only come to cell meeting like once or twice because um, we're, we're, we've been more friends you know, than just, you know, a student teacher kind of relationship. You know, we've been friends before that. And now, you know, this particular night, uh, we'd been hanging out. We, we had a couple of times where we hung out and, and I'd shared that we were working toward this Rhapsody partnership. And I told her that we were gonna sponsor a million copies. And so she knew what, what I was doing. And that night particularly, we're hanging out and um, you know, the, my alarms had gone off for the pat, for, for our 10 o'clock prayer. And I told her, I was like, hey, like this is really important. You know, this is something like, I, like, I don't wanna miss this. Like, you know, let's get, like, I, I'd like to join the prayer. And she said, we can join the prayer. She was like, cool with it. I was like, awesome. Cause you know, it's like in the middle of us just hanging out, you know, not everybody would be okay, like cool about that, but she was so cool about it. So we joined the prayer and we're praying. I'm praying in the spirit, I'm pastor, I think we I think we watched a message that night, like a portion of a message. And, you know, it was awesome doing that, like, you know, us sharing that experience. And then by the end of it, I remember we shared some words of inspiration and particularly Pastor prayed us out. And when Pastor closed us with the prayer, with the closing prayer for the evening, I just remember her being like, she was kind of like really taking it in. Like I could tell her, like like she was kind of lingering on what was being said at the end of the prayer. And, and I was like, I was like, what did you think? And she was like, that was beautiful. I was very compelled and moved to giving to Rhapsody. After engaging in the prayer with uh, Pastor Deji, my spirit was ultimately just moved to give and I prayed along with everybody on the on the call and the spirit just moved me to, to ultimately give and I was very happy, grateful and thankful that I did so. But then I'm on my way home that night and we're texting and she's like, How I want I wanna give toward the Rhapsody. I'm like, Oh amazing. And um, like that's amazing. Like I'm so excited. And I get home, uh, I tell her good night and I realized, I, I think, uh, I, I didn't tell her what to label it as. So she 
But she said she, she'd given it already. So then the next morning I was like, hey, what did you label it as? And she said she labeled it as Rhapsody Fund Donation, right? I was like, okay, good. It's got Rhapsody in it, so we should be good. Um, but then I text Sister Elizabeth because, you know, finance. You know, I tell Elizabeth, hey, it's under Rhapsody Fund Donation. I just want to make sure that it gets sorted correctly when it comes to the, you know, what goes in, com what goes in and comes out. And she said, um, she was like, oh my. Like she said a bunch of emojis. And I was like, what's the big deal? Like in my head, that's what I'm thinking. And I was like, what? And she was like, she gave $3,500. And I was like, what? Like what? We needed to cross the finish line. So we're not gonna start and say, okay, who? We'll, we'll, We'll try again next year. No, we had to finish. So now it's a matter of days to the presidential award when the books will actually be finally closed. We're speaking in tongues, we're praying and we're prophesying. And by the Spirit, Pastor Deji led us. We started having our midnight prayers. And then we went back to our 10 p.m. prayers. But then, specifically, we had our prayer and prophecy nights where prophecies came. Words of encouragement came. Oh boy, oh boy, how God was with us. How the angel of wealth was with us. How grace was with us. So on Tuesday, November 14th, I received a text message saying that pastor is calling an urgent meeting for all leaders. And I'm thinking, what else could it be, right? It's probably about the Rhapsody of Reality. So, you know, we rallied all of our members, um, all the leaders across the networks to be present for that meeting. You know, we spent some time to pray. This was actually, IPPC had already begun by then. So Pastor and some of the leaders were already back in Nigeria. And so Pastor was calling this meeting in the middle of the night, his time, glory to God. So we knew it was urgent. Um, so we spent some time and we prayed we spoke in tongues and then we had prophecies you know you know we spent some time just to prophesy about the one million copies of rhapsody project that we were doing during the second super session it was pastoral culture i was giving a message on um overflows around like it was around that topic and i just sat down and the spirit just the spirit just ministered to me and told me that this one million copies of rhapsody is done I smiled to myself. I looked at my surroundings. Nobody was, everybody was listening. I nudged Pastor Debbie. I said, because she was sitting to my right. I said, we've completed 1 million, 1 million copies of Rhapsodies. She was like, what did you see? How did you know? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I was like, I don't have evidence right now, but I promise you, I'm going to show you the evidence. I left the meeting and I went to pray. You know, I'm speaking in tongues, just, you know, charging myself up, you know, bringing the money out from my spirit because if I looked in my account, I had already... <laughs> Not less than five minutes. Then I saw Pastor Dan, he stood up to go greet Pastor, Pastor Deji. I looked around like, am I, the one who, am I seeing a vision or there's something going on? Nobody even saw it. Then I was like, Pastor Deji, I said we have completed one million copies of Rhapsody. She wanted to jump out of her skin. Even myself, I was trying to hold the excitement, but I don't know how to feel. Like, should I... The se a session is going on. Should I jump up? Should I scream? After spending some time to pray, on my own, I went to sleep. It was about midnight. I went to sleep. Actually, I remember I had fallen asleep on my couch that day. And... So I, I woke up shortly before morning prayers. We have morning prayers um, in Oasis at 5.30 a.m. And I woke up shortly before morning prayers and the leaders group chat is blowing up. You know, everyone's, everyone's talking about, we did it, we did it, what? Like, I'm like, how? Like, four hours ago, we were at 114,000. Like, how? Yeah, I saw a text message from Sister Noella. She said, we have done it. And she posted um, a picture that had Pastor Deji's face on it and said, you know, congratulations, BLWS, USA Group 3, Diamond Sponsorship. And I'm like, what? Like, you literally can't make this stuff up. Everything that the Lord has designed for you to do, even the opportunities and the timing that you had missed out on, it is recovered now in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Masata Kayala Basike Bosotus. Yes, there's a restoration by the Spirit of God that is happening in this season. A restoration of that which had been lost by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You came, you gave the very best you gave. You had a choice to walk away, you chose to stay for me. You've walked so hard, so selfless you have been. You did it all because you love the Lord. For every sacrifice you made, no, it's not in vain. I know it's not in vain. I see heaven rejoicing, angels applauding, rainbows awaken, celebrating you. The future is sure for you. It's higher and higher. The hand of the Lord rest upon you. Thank you. You paved the way for every one of us. You made the work so easy. Yes, you did. For every sacrifice you've made, no, it's not in vain. I know it's not in vain. I see heaven rejoicing, angels applaud. Future.